Charlotte back in late 2019 were rewarded the 30th slot in the MLS. They were supposed to play in 2021, but that was postponed to 2022 after, you know, COVID. And throughout the last two years, we have seen a club build an excellent roster with plenty of depth. I mean, just listen to what our manager Miguel Angel Ramirez had to say about it. Y'all take it easy. I'm out. To put it simply, Charlotte FC aren't exactly in a great spot. Out of 30 possible roster spots, the club has only filled 25 spots with just 8 days till their first match. Now this isn't entirely the club's fault, so they've been pretty unlucky trying to get a winger. The US men's national team sweetheart Paul Ariola was close to signing only to be traded to FC Dallas. Derby County's Kamil Yozviak was supposed to move but then got injured in a match against Birmingham City. Then there was Darwin Machis, who had agreed personal terms for a 6 million move to Charlotte FC, only to be involved in a bar fight. Well, However, here is now where all the blame is on Charlotte FC. But first, let me explain to you the designated player slots. So unlike pretty much the entire rest of the world, MLS has a salary cap. Designated player slots are used for players whose wages or transfer fees exceed said salary cap. Clubs get three of these slots each. We're eight days away from the new season, and Charlotte have signed just one singular designated player in Karol Schwiderski, who, don't get me wrong, is a striker capable of playing in the Serie A or any top five league in that matter, but we are still two steps behind everyone else. Not to mention, as of this recording, it's now been eight days since the Machis fallout, and we still haven't bought a quality winger. We actually don't even have a winger. Charlotte had two years to figure this all out. Yes, one of those years they couldn't do much, but that just gives them more time to scout. There's no such thing as limited money. We literally have David Headass Tepper as owner. And yet here we are, close to the beginning of the city's historic year in the MLS, and the club cannot get its shit together. Despite all this, no one should be commended more than manager Miguel Angel Ramirez. Even though the front office is a complete dumpster fire, Ramirez is doing the most he can with what he has. The the issue is, there are still a lot of things that are working against him. The board, as we've mentioned for the last couple minutes, is one of them. Another time. It's not easy building a team from scratch, and it's even harder to get them playing well as a cohesive force. Charlotte haven't played much together, and as a result, their chemistry is pretty low. I mean, they recently just lost to a USL team, and quite frankly, I'm not that surprised. It's going to take time for this team to gel, but again, what isn't helping is the board's incompetence. Because despite Ramirez's requirements, quest of wingers and a couple starting level strikers, we have barely seen any of that kind of progress. It is genuinely laughable that this club made a statement on aiming for the MLS playoffs, because right now they are far from it. Delusions of an adult mind. By the way, the club doesn't have a technical director, because the one that we had left late January. And I guess there was no replacement because we still don't have one. But yeah, so far this has been nothing but a $300 million L. Now here's the other problem. Charlotte FC's ticket prices. As I've said in the past briefly, they're ridiculous. Season tickets costed well over a thousand per seat, and on top of that, you're required to buy a personal seat license for an extra couple hundred. And just a quick mention, Charlotte is the only club that sells personal seat licenses. Felipe Cardenas of The Athletic had this to say about the ticket prices, and this is genuinely one of the dumbest takes I have ever seen. US sports ticket prices are already insane as is. Charlotte FC, by the way, who haven't played a single match in the MLS yet, have the most expensive or one of the most expensive ticket prices in the entire league. There's no defending that. As for Charlotte's first home game, there's been 65,000 tickets sold, and the entire upper tier of the stadium has been sold out. Then you go to the lower tier of the stadium, where there are still massive chunks of empty seats because they're over $100. You could literally pay for a Champions League match at Bayern or any of the top European clubs for much less. Like, it's just really funny to me, because the club is aiming to break the record for high attendance in an MLS match with these prices. The club claims that they're trying to build an importance on fan culture, and it really doesn't seem that way. Since most of you, or actually like probably 99% of you, don't live in the Charlotte region, let me give you a little bit of history. Charlotte throughout its history is a city plagued by systemic racism. Highways and interstates have completely bulldozed or just barricaded black neighborhoods. There's actually a region you can see where three separate highways barricade a predominantly black area of Charlotte. Charlotte is also a 
city plagued by the modern disease that is gentrification, which has affected low-income neighborhoods in numerous ways including displacing families and small businesses. Much like how I-277 barricades low-income families from uptown, Charlotte FC's ticket prices barricade low-income fans from seeing their team in person. Football is meant to be enjoyed by everyone, and Charlotte FC had the ultimate opportunity to create a proper fan culture by creating a fusion between those low-income and high-income families, and they completely f***ing blew it. All credit to Charlotte FC's social media team putting a spotlight on the culture in this city, but so far, that's about the only positive going for the club. Listen, I get that all of my videos about Charlotte FC so far have been pretty negative. I mean, this isn't just a Charlotte FC type deal. I'm not afraid to talk about any club that's doing something wrong. But I'd love to hear what you guys think, and of course, a massive thank you to our patrons. Janos Balas, Alex Rod, Daniel Ortiz, Edgar Ayas, Joseph Bonfante, Lacazette Goat, Windy Mintang, Senaid Fehad Begovic, The Motor Drive, Victor, Dominic Griffin, Emmett Shea, Lewis, Joe Gallagher, Tomicus, Andres Was Never Here, Big Bird, Cash Getty, Igzo, Itachi the Homie, Casa, Mark Morcos, and Nathan Trong. If you'd like to join the Patreon, there'll be a link down below and up in the annotations there. You can follow my Twitter if you'd like, follow my Instagram if you want, follow my TikTok, trying to get to 6,000 there, and of course you can follow my slightly inactive Twitch. But until then, I'll see you guys.